Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today, I want to walk you through very briefly how you can update packages safely with PNPM. Now, I've done a video recently on PNPM showing why I've started using it in a lot of my um, a lot of my projects that I've been doing. And it comes down to these four things that they mentioned here. It's really fast. It's super fast because most of the time it's not uh, re-downloading any packages. It's just using them across any common projects. It's efficient because things are just linked rather than, again, them all being embedded in every single project. And so you're not taking up a bunch of disk space itself. Uh, it's really good for mono repos, which I haven't used it for that, but I know that's a lot of the re reasons why people like it. And then it is slightly more secure in the way that it creates the kind of node module structure, um, but I didn't go a ton into that in the last video. But I've recently discovered that there's actually a built-in feature inside of PMPM that allows you to safely update packages in an interactive way. And that's what I want to show you today. So here's a project I did a while back on the channel. I know it's long enough that uh, it's going to need to be updated. And you can see here that what we're doing is actually pulling in stuff through Notion as kind of a backend CMS light kind of thing. And if I were to refresh here, you can see I get this little skeleton loading animation and then in pops in all of this live data for my Notion database and uh, creates these little cards. We used Adam Argyle's open props on this as well. So if you're interested in this, I'll try to remember to add a link at the end of the video that you can click and watch through how, uh, how we built this out. But all that to say, I know that these uh, have got to be way out of date. So let's go ahead and kill this right here. And what I'm going to do is jump over here to the PMPM docs and just show you how you can update it. Now, uh, you can see that they kind of give you a shorthand if you just want to know real briefly how to do it. But I'm going to walk you through a lot of these different options and kind of show you what I typically do. Uh, so first of all, the easiest thing to start with is just PMPM uh, up, or you can do update if you want. That works just fine. This is the shorthand, though, that up. And then there's a bunch of different options that you can pass. So if you're using this in a mono repo, you'd want to pass the recursive flag because that will run it basically in any submodules or any subdirectories that have a package.json file. Uh, so for now, I'm not going to do that because this is just a kind of a flat single uh, directory with one project in it. But just so you know, that's how you would do that. What I do want to do is come in here and do the latest flag. And again, you can see there that I can either do a capital L or dash dash latest. So let's just do a capital L. This little thing over here is called fig. And I hope to next week release a video showing how I set up my terminal. And in that, I'll show you how to get fig uh, up and running as well. Now, if you also want to update any global packages on your machine, you can pass it the global flag. I don't typically do that, um, but you're welcome to do that if you'd like to. Um, also, if you're running this and you have different workspaces, you can actually target workspaces with a workspace flag. Just pass workspace and then the name of whatever workspace that you're working in. You can also target whether or not you want to just look at the dependencies, which would be your production uh, dependencies, or if you want to target your dev dependencies. Now, by default, it'll do both, but if you want to target one or the other, you can do that. The one that I think is a real killer feature here is the interactive flag. So I'm going to do uh, dash I, just like that. And let's go ahead and hit enter or return and just watch this do its thing. Let me pull this up and we'll zoom in just a little bit. So you can see here what it's doing is giving you an interactive list of everything that needs to be updated in this project. And as you can see, there are a lot of things that are way out of date that I need to update. And they even tag which ones are dev dependencies and which ones are not. Now, I don't have a lot in this project, obviously, but if I had a ton, this would be really important to know. Well, as you can see, I can either hit space to select a single one, and you can see how that gets circled in, that white circle gets filled in, or I can hit A to toggle them all, or I can invert selection with the I. What I typically like to do is just go one after the other. So I usually start with things that are only, you know, minor versions or just patches, and I'll go ahead and update that. So for instance, I could just do Vite and go ahead and hit that, and then watch it update. Now, like I said, because PMPM is, has like a global store on my machine, now anything that uses the latest of Vite will also have access to this, to this very quickly. So if I go update that, it'll be super quick. And you can see here, I get a readout of exactly what happened. And typically what I would do then is go ahead and just commit this. And that way I've got kind of a save point if I need to go back. But let's say I want to keep going and I can keep going this way. Now let's pass one more filter and that's this, or one more flag and that's the filter flag. And uh, if you click on this, read more about filtering, they give you a bunch of different options here where you can filter by package name. Uh, you can p p 
filter. You can see by version and all this kind of stuff. Um, I'm not going to show you any of this because I haven't done a lot of this myself. Usually I just kind of go one after the other. Um, I have shown how to do this with NPM before using something called node check updates. And so if you're interested in that and you're an NPM user, you can check that out. For that one, you can actually flag whether or not you want to fix just patches or just minor versions or just major versions. And then you can also filter by specific package names. If you know how to do that in PMPM, let me know. I couldn't figure it out, so I haven't been doing that, but uh, you are uh, maybe smarter than me on that, so let me know. All right, let's come back in here. All of my things live in the same package, so I'm just going to hit the up arrow and return to my interactive menu to see the last two I need to update. And this time, let's go ahead and hit A just to grab them all, and I'll hit Enter, and now it will go ahead and start to work on those. Now, once again, the way PMPM works, you can see here it's actually looking through what it needs, seeing which ones it can reuse, and then only downloading the things it actually needs. And because I evidently have used some of these packages in a more recent project, you can see it's not having to do all of the work that I would typically have to do with NPM. All right, so it's almost done, and I'm just gonna let it finish out and then be right back with you. All right, there we go. We've updated all of our dependencies, both our dev and our production dependencies. Now, normally, like I say, I kind of do these one at a time and have a save point so that I can always go back. But let's go ahead and just test it to see if this worked or to see if I need to go back uh, to an earlier save point. So let me use my Netlify dev command and something's happening. Oh, cool. And looks like my machine switched to dark mode in the meantime. So there you go. Now you even get the dark mode. So everything is still working. Awesome. All right. That's just called the YOLO update, but uh, sometimes it works. Well, I hope that was helped to you. If you're interested either in that updater for NPM or in PMPM itself, go ahead and check out those videos. Of course, if you want to look into this Notion CMS, I'll leave a link to that as well, both in the description and at the end. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was a help. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.